Humanity, beyond the definition synonymous to humankind, is commonly understood as the characteristic of compassion and empathy present in most people that allows us a sense of brotherhood with the rest of society and ideally is the foundational value that our communities are built upon. This humanity functions as a sort of compass that guides us to make morally sound decisions and reassess our opinions and actions when faced with injustice. While this empathy does not guide everyone in the same way, it is still what sparks change when society as a whole is too slow to unanimously recognize its own faults. Our humanity is a function of our mortality, an understanding that suffering is a universal concept and an ethical desire to improve the lives of others alongside our own. As time passes, people come and go, bringing new ideas and passing them on to those who come after. We live lives that inspire us with their brevity, and many of us would like to make positive change in the world before we leave it. So in a society like that of the Gems in Hoseki no Kuni, where people cannot similarly conceive suffering or death, do empathy, humanity, and society as we understand them exist? In many ways, Gem society is a good reflection of our own. Everyone works together to fend off the conflict brought on by the Lunarians. For the most part, everyone has a meaningful part to play in the community. Some of them have individual jobs like carpentry or tailoring or medicine. Ultimately, they all find value in contributing to society. There's a tangible sense of camaraderie and everyone supports each other. At least, as long as the others are able to contribute as well. The protagonist of the story, Phosphophyllite, is among the very few gems that are unable to contribute anything of perceived value to the community. When we're introduced to them, Foss is portrayed as lazy, simple-minded, and exceptionally naive. Because of their fragile constitution, they are not suited for fighting as they so wish, and it's revealed that Sensei has been looking for a job they can handle for the past 300 years. When finally offered a doable job, Foss refuses to do it on the grounds that it's pointless and is just a way to keep them busy. <laughs> Foss sees right through Sensei, even though we don't really get this at first. It seems that Foss is just being stubborn or ungrateful. It's not until we're introduced to Cinnabar, the other gem unable to contribute to society, that we really understand what Sensei was doing. Cinnabar, despite being an incredibly talented fighter, is unable to do much of anything without irreversibly poisoning the world around them. We learn that they too have been given a pointless job. <laughs> While the encyclopedia is still more substantial than a pointless night watch, we're able to pick up on the reoccurring theme here. The illusion of productivity is better than idling about for eternity. It's subtle, but this is the first demonstration of empathy that we're offered, and it's no coincidence that it occurs with Foss. Back when Foss was just learning to talk, the others asked Sensei if Foss would fight alongside them, to which Sensei said, <laughs> Compare this to what Sensei said about Cinnabar. While Foss seems content to hang around and bother the other gems, Cinnabar is ashamed by their uselessness and stays away from the others as much as possible, going as far as to live in a cave outside the school. Foss and Cinnabar are different in many ways, but both are ultimately unable to contribute anything of perceived value to the community, and are each, in their own way, hurt by this. Their confrontation is the first time Foss is forced to seriously consider the feeling of someone else. They impulsively promise to help Cinnabar. <laughs> this is when they begin to realize what separates Phosphophyllite from the other gems. It's not their weak constitution or naive nature, but rather their immense capacity for empathy that the others don't seem to demonstrate to a similar extent. That isn't to say the other gems aren't capable of empathy or never make an effort to understand each other. Diamond and Euclase in particular come to mind when we think of other gems that have exhibited a deeper inclination for relating to the others. But these instances of compassion always serve to highlight the absence of it in the others. When Daya thinks Foss has been turned into a slug, they're the only one that believes Foss should be turned back. The other gems point out that Foss didn't do anything to begin with, so the community as a whole isn't losing anything valuable now that they're incapacitated. So why not just leave Foss like that? Now Foss really can't do anything anymore, huh? I don't know. Never did anything before either. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I don't feel as though Foss has really changed much at all. Later in the manga, when Foss is trying to convince the other gems to get Sensei to pray, Euclase, while acknowledging they could be lying, is also the only gem that believes they should hear the other side of the argument out anyways. Despite this, the others ignore Euclase and decide to write Foss off as a liar automatically, refusing to hear them out at all. So the other gems think Foss is a nuisance, and Cinnabar is ashamed to face the others. So what? 
Well, both of these things ultimately come back to a fundamental lack of empathy demonstrated within the community. In gym society, a person's worth is directly influenced by their contribution to society. Foss does not contribute, so the idea of them disappearing or shattering indefinitely doesn't bother the others all that much. Cinnabar does not contribute, so they are unable to face the others, and the others make no effort to seek them out. It's not something you might notice right away while watching or reading Hoseki no Kuni, because aside from the whole slug example, the lack of empathy is subtle. It's clear that the gems care about each other, as we can see them grieving on multiple occasions when gems are lost or when talking about old friends who have been lost. But once again, other than Foss, none of the gems are ever shown experiencing any sort of deeper visceral pain when faced with this kind of loss. I'm not going to consider Rutile's whole thing that happens later in the manga as a viable example, because there's a lot of other stuff that I feel like goes into said thing that removes it as an example of empathy, but that's a whole other topic for a whole other video. The gems will go to great lengths to protect each other from the Lunarians. They do care for each other, it's just that beyond consideration for the physical well-being of the others, they can be really callous to each other without meaning to be, and it just appears to be part of their culture. So why does nobody in this world seem capable of empathy? As we said earlier, our humanity is a function of our mortality. Not just the fact that we die, but that we feel things like pain, hunger, and even temperature. These are all things that gems don't experience, and are therefore things they cannot factor into their own capacity for empathy. They are almost never called to consider the suffering of others. When Foss's depression gets the better of them, Rutile tells them they're affecting the others negatively. When Cinnabar hides away in the night, the others ignore them and call them creepy. When Daya is jealous of Bortz and humiliated by their inability to keep up with them, Bortz continues to berate Daya for not being perfect. The gems love and support each other, but ultimately their interest remains firmly based in maintaining the status quo, where nothing changes and the majority of them, the gems who are able to contribute to society, are happy. This struggle to properly grasp humanity as we know it is a fundamental aspect of the conflict faced by the gems. Humankind is ever-changing, always compelled to improve because of our limited lifespans and our desire to alleviate the suffering of others. The gems of Hoseki no Kuni are immortal, unchanging. Thousands of years can go by, and they will remain the same as they ever were. That's why Phosphophyllite is the catalyst for conflict. They have an immense capacity for empathy, and because of this, they are the first gem to go out and incite change. Every time Foss's body undergoes change, the loss of limbs is attached to an act of compassion. First, it was their effort to help Ventricosis that lost them their legs. Next, it was a desire to become more useful to the others, which lost them their arms and incited Antarcticite sacrifice. When they lost their head, Cairngorm begged Sensei to use Lapis Lazuli's head as a replacement, or else use Cairngorm's own. When Foss's hair is cut and falls into the sea, they encounter Very Goddess, who reignites their desire to bring their fallen friends back. When Foss's eye is replaced, it is because they are preparing to act on their plan to save everyone. Hoseki no Kuni correlates empathy with change. It might not be an explicit statement, and maybe Ichikawa never even thought too deeply about it, but the correlation remains nonetheless. In a world where nothing changes and nobody dies, people don't need to consider the consequences of their actions. They are almost never confronted with the suffering of others, and so find it difficult to perceive an experience different from their own. Without mortality, it's hard to imagine that empathy would exist to the same extent that we know it, and without empathy, we would become complacent, and change would become obsolete. That's enough for our existential rock ramblings for one day. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please let us know in the comments below. Likewise, if you didn't like this video or disagree with what we said, we would love to hear your feedback so we can improve in the future. Once again, we would like to stress that our goal is to incite conversation, and anything you guys have to say is valuable to us. As always, thanks, thanks for, for sticking, sticking till the end, end and, and don't forget to smash that subscribe <laughs> quietly so the pool boys don't hear us scream. <laughs> At least, as long as the others are able to contribute as well. Got him. Mm -hmm. ah! Take that Foss and Cinnabar! <laughs> Don't ass bitches! This is when they begin to realize what separates Phosphosphalite. <sighs> what separates Phosphosphalite. <laughs> Say it for me. First, it was their effort to help... Ooh, what is that? Ventricosis. When they lost their head... Who is that? Karen... Hang on, I'm sorry. Karen <laughs> <laughs> Gum! Thanks to all our patrons who support the channel so generously, and a special thanks to our space explorers Alex Strussball and Frosty Fullbuster. Why is that man dead scuba diving in my pool? Do you think he could hear us? Oh, 
Oh, he's on your water? Oh, shit, they could, that's like a guy from Yeah, you can still be here under.